how can you pass or access command line arguments in C-sharp? You can do that in all kinds of C-sharp publications, starting from the console apps, the WinForms and WPF desktop applications, the web apps, the net MAUI applications. For example, when you create a console application, the main method can be used to accept command line arguments as an array of strings. So let's start with a console application example, and we're going to look at some other cases as well. Okay, this is my console application. Let's see how we can pass and read arguments. We are going to use the main method and we can simply pass an array of strings, which are going to be our arguments. And let's simply print them to the screen. I'm going to use console right line. Let's first print the number of arguments, total command line arguments is args length and let's then print them for i equals zero i smaller than args length And we're going to use a gate call so right line and let's do the argument and let's print I as well. Yeah, something like this. So let me run the application, which is called Tutorials, I believe. So let's do that quickly and to Tutorials. And we can do banana and mango. We're going to pass two arguments to our application and you can see that we have the number of command line parameters is two and the first argument is banana and the second one is mango. So this is how you can pass arguments to your application. You can use the main method and pass the arguments as a array of strings and also read them and print them to the console and use them throughout your application. And next, let's take a look at a WinForms application. And now let's see how we can pass and access the command line arguments to a WinForms application. Let's create our application first. I'm going to use the same solution. So let's go add new project and I'm going to go WinForms. And this is, let's create it quickly. Okay, we can just leave the name and we're using net8. And let's create our application. And I'm just going to, okay, let's rename it to main form. And I'm just going to make sure that our form is centered when we started. And let's make this informs up. Okay, so how can we access the command line arguments? We can go to the programs and we can use string arguments equals and environment get command line args. This is how you access the command line arguments in a WinForms application using the get command line args environment method and then we can pass the arguments to our main form and then we can use it the same way we did in the console application so let's open the code quickly and right here we can access the arguments so what should we do let's print them to screen 
and see what happens because this is um, a little bit different than the console application. You have a the first command line argument is actually the path to the executable. So let me show you quickly. Let's go string builder, string builder equals new string builder. Let's make this as B and I'm going to loop through the arguments and we're going to append line argument and we can use the main form load method to show the command line argument so let's go string builder length is greater than zero we can pop up a message box message box and okay what should our message be string message equals we have let's go and command line args then equals zero And so we have command line arguments and we can add this to our string builder. Let's do that. Actually, let's do that right here. And line message and we're going to show the string builder here okay so let's run our application without any arguments just to see what happens okay so i'm going to run the application without any arguments and let's see what happens you see what we have the message box pops up and it says we have one command line argument and then it gives us the command line arguments, which, which is actually the path to our executable. If I actually use the dot net command to run the executable directly, we're going to see the same thing. So when you use the WinForms applications, the first argument is actually the path to the executable which is our dynamic link library and if you want to pass some additional arguments then they're going to be actually the user supplied arguments are going to be the ones after the first one so let's try to do that next so again i'm going to pass a one banana argument and one mango argument and let's see what we get once we run the application let me just try to make this bigger and now we have three command line arguments and the first one again is the path to our executable the second one is our banana and the third one is our mango which means that if you want to access only the user supplied command line arguments you can do that by accessing the arguments starting from the index of one and up so if we are interested only in the user supplied command line arguments let's change our code to show only that so we're going to change this to user supplied command line args length and it is going to be the length of all the arguments minus one since we are not interested in the first one which is the path to our executable and we have this many user supplied command line arguments and right here we're going to change our loop for int i equals one i smaller than args length and we're going to go args i and our application should now show us only the user supplied command line arguments now let's run it one more time and see what happens okay 
let's call .NET our application name. Let's make this bigger and pass a few arguments. We go banana again, mango, apple, and these are only the user supplied arguments. And so I need to make sure that this is the executable. And now we have three user supplied command line arguments, banana, mango, and apple. Again, if you want to access the only the user supplied arguments in your WinForms application, you simply need to skip the first one, which is the path to your executable. And the ones after that are the user supplied command line arguments. One thing you need to understand that the older WinForms applications, the ones that target the net framework, for example, the net 4.8 or earlier versions do not actually have this first command line argument. So if you are using some legacy applications, some legacy WinForms applications, and you want to pass and read the command line arguments, you can actually use it the same way we did in our console application example, meaning that the very first command line argument is going to be the user supplied argument. And unlike here, where the first command line argument is the executable part. And now let's quickly show how we can store and access the command line arguments in a web application. For obvious reasons, this is far less common as the other methods to pass any arguments. But uh, in case you need to do that, you can still do it. So let's go ahead and add our web application project to the same solution. So let's go add new project. Let's make it a Blazor web app. We can just leave the default name and we go next and going to leave it as is. And let's make this the startup project and we can go to the program CS file where we need to add the arguments to the dependency injection container. So let's do that quickly. Okay, so let's go. Builder services add singleton args. So what we're doing here, we are adding the command line arguments to the dependency injection container and now let's go to our pages and we're going to display the arguments, if any, in our home page. So let's do that. Okay, I'm just going to paste my code here. We inject the command line arguments and then we can access them. Let's uh, quickly run the application and see what we are going to get. And you can see command line arguments. We have no command line arguments. So I'm going to publish the application. Then I'm going to start with the .NET command. I'm going to pass a few command line arguments and we're going to see if they're going to be shown on our home page Blazor web application. So let me do that quickly. I'm going to go publish. I'm going to choose my folder. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. Okay. Folder next. I'm going to select my folder. I'm going to close it and I'm going to publish my application. And after I do that, I'm going to use the .NET command to run it with a few command line arguments. So let's do that next. Okay. So let's go .NET and our application name. And we're going to pass two command line arguments and our application has started. So let's see what happens. And you can see that after I refresh the page, we have command line arguments, banana and apple. And again, this is how you can pass the command line arguments in case you need to. And when it comes to web applications, this is not that often, but you can still use them. And this is how you do it. And this is basically all for today. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button.